Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you because we know that you brought us in for a purpose. And we're praying that that purpose you continually fulfill in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that you open our eyes to the scriptures. Help us to understand what you have called us to do, what you have called us to be. Grant us the desire, the purpose, determination that will be and do what you want of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the watch at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. That call of God, that description of the ministry of Ezekiel, brought a consequence or something he was to do as a result of that. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. The ministry of a real child of God is centered on God. And everything revolves around the Lord himself. We get the word from the Lord. Then we give it to the people. Actually, you will see here that the title given to a leader, Christian leader, a worker, Christian worker, is that of a watchman. And you need to study the Bible and examine the titles that the preachers and the leaders and the workers in the Bible that they are given. Let me just show you a few. Number one, a uh, Christian leader is referred to as an ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading there in verse 20. There it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Number one then, we are ambassadors. And that carries a lot of meaning. Number two, we are referred to as elders in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Verse 17, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they would labor in the word and in doctrine. We're referred to not only as ambassadors, we're referred to as elders. Of course, you know, we're referred to as fishers of men. Fishers, not just keepers of men, not just keepers of members in the church, fishers of men, reaching out in the sea of humanity and throwing out the net, as well as the network, and drawing souls into the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He's not going to make us fishers of men if we're not following him. But as you are following him, and he knows you are following, then you give him a chance to make you one of the fishers of men. He makes us not only fishers of men, but laborers. That's why he tells us in Matthew chapter 9, reading verse 38. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And we cannot then be in the work of the Lord and not labor. We cannot be in the work of the Lord and not sweat. Because and that's the real calling that we have. He also refers to us as men of God, women of God, First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, looking at verse 11. It says here, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, follow unto righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So then we are men of God, women of God to you. But we are also referred to as the messengers of the church. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 23. 2 Corinthians 8, 23. Whether any do inquire of Titus, is my partner, fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. And you see then that we are supposed to minister to the people. We are supposed to serve them because we are messengers 
of the church. But then he tells us, as we are messengers of the church, uh, what we actually give to the church in our service, in our servitude, in our ministry. In Luke chapter 1, verse 2, the workers and the leaders are referred to as the ministers of the word. Chapter 1, verse 2 of Luke, even as they delivered them unto us, we from the beginning were eyewitnesses and the ministers of the word. You understand then? What you are to serve to the people. What you are to give to the people. You minister the word. You give the word. You preach the word. You teach the word. You emphasize the word because that's exactly your calling. But we are not only ministers of the word. We are overseers over the church of the living God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Verse 28, take ye to us, take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Of course, you know the title pastor. We are referred to as pastors in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verse 15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's what pastors are for. Pastors are not just to, you know, stay in the church or sit on the chair or just own up to a title, just carry a title. Yes, yeah, so what you do is to feed the people of God with knowledge and with understanding. Of course, you know, one of the primary assignments of the pastor is to preach. Therefore, the a worker or Christian leader in the church is referred to as a preacher. In Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? We who are Christian workers, we who are Christian leaders, are referred to you as preachers. In doing that, we are actually serving the church, we are serving the Lord, we are serving Christ, and we are the servants of Christ. The servants of Christ, that's another title. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ. Servants of Jesus Christ. And uh, we are soldiers in spiritual soldiers of course in um, philippians chapter 2 verse 25 yet i supposed it necessary to send unto you epaphroditus my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier fellow soldier but your messenger i need that minister to my wants we're soldiers, soldiers of the cross, and soldiers of the Lord. And we're referred to as stewards of the mysteries of God. The secret things of the kingdom. The Lord delivers that unto us. It's been kept secret from the foundation of the earth. And we are the stewards that carry that thing to the people of God while they are waiting for the knowledge of the Almighty. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. First Corinthians 4, 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards of the mysteries of God. And um, another title related to what we said before, pastoring and preaching, is that of teaching. We are referred to as teachers. Teachers. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, and the water of affliction. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Uh, the Lord here was promising the children of Israel that although he may punish them in other ways and by other means. And even though he might give them the bread of adversity and the water of affliction to drink. But he was going to show one favor to them. He was going to allow the teachers to remain with them. Because it's as the teachers teach them the word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. They'll be able to understand if they need to repent, seek forgiveness, have faith, and then plunge into uh, the, the mercy of God and the goodness and the grace of God. And then, yes, he said in verse 21, shall hear a word behind this saying, this is the way walking, each when he shall turn to the right hand or when he shall turn to the left. We're then teachers of the word. But we're also called witnesses. 
who have witnessed the goodness of the Lord and the peace that God gives. And we have witnessed that he wants to give it to other people. The Holy Ghost comes upon us and then we become witnesses of the Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses, that's the title, witnesses, unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And of course, very simply stated, we are referred to as workers, Christian workers, in Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. But I read to you that we are also watchmen. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. It makes us watchmen and you see the various titles were referred to of which that were bear ambassadors elders fishers of men laborers in the kingdom of god men and women of god messengers of the church the ministers of the world overseers too pastors preachers servants of christ shepherds soldiers stewards of the mysteries of god teachers witness worker watchman we're concentrating on one title today but you need to understand each of these titles reveals an aspect of our responsibilities and we need to pray for grace to be and to do all that god appoints and all that god expects of us and we're looking at the title today the watchman and the title of the message is the ministry and the rewards of spiritual watchmen. The ministry and the rewards of spiritual watchmen. And we come back to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. There we're reading from verse 17. I break the message to three parts. Number one, the responsibilities of spiritual watchmen. As watchmen, we have responsibilities. And of course, as ambassador, we have responsibility. As elders in the church, and there are some responsibilities attached to that. As fishers of men, throwing the net into the sea of humanity, there are responsibilities attached to that. As laborers in the harvest, farming, cultivating, bringing in harvest into the kingdom, there are responsibilities attached to that. And of course, as men and women of god carrying yourself with dignity and honor with majesty the glory of god reflecting the very goodness and the greatness of god there's responsibility attached to that and as messengers of the church bending low humbling ourselves being able to wash the feet of the believers of members of the church just messengers and servants what great responsibilities are attached to that what do you say about the minister of the world searching the world studying the world digging out deep truths out of the world serving the people with the undiluted word of the almighty god taking nothing away adding nothing there too and as overseers supervising overseeing taking care examining investigating making sure that the people remain in the faith and as pastors feeding the people of god with knowledge and understanding, preachers preaching the word in season and out of season. When they want it, when they don't want it. When it's convenient, when it's not convenient. Until the Lord will come. And as a servant of Christ, understand that you are responsible to Christ and not unto men. And it's unto Christ who will give the account of your work on the final day. And that you want to make sure that everything you do every time, you want to say, how is my master, my lord, my king, the one that controls my life and ministry? How is he seeing everything I'm doing? Servants of Christ. And as shepherds, giving your life for the sheep. A soldier enduring affliction. 
doing the work of an evangelist. And whatever he takes and whatever he demands, going ahead and never stopping because of, you know, the roses that have been little thorns, because of the difficulties and the roughness of the road. A stewards of the mysteries of Christ, being very careful that exactly what you are given, you hold as precious. This treasure in earthly vessel, you don't allow anything to pollute it. You don't uh, make anything contaminate it. And then as teacher, understanding that even though the people may have the problems and may have a lot of things they're going through, they eat the bread of adversity and they drink the water of affliction. Yet, this truth of life eternal, through it all, you keep on teaching them, laying line upon line and precept on. Precept as witnesses, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you know what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And then your witnesses that he died for everyone. And he died for the people you are witnessing to. And as workers, you work. As workers, you work. You don't just carry the title and bear the card. You work. And you really work your fingers to the bone. Then as watchmen, and what a great thing you have. What a great responsibility you have as watchmen responsibilities of spiritual watchmen ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 son of man i have made thee oh thank god it's not by voting thank god it's not by campaign thank god it's not by rallying people around us politically and then promoting ourselves i'm now so and so i'm now a watchman son of man I, Almighty God, talking to Ezekiel, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the watch at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Listen to what I say, was telling Ezekiel. They don't listen to what the people say. Everybody will not believe the judgment to come. Everybody will not be interested to hear that judgment is going to come, that the wicked shall pay a death penalty for his wickedness. But when I say unto that wicked man, that wicked woman, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest to him not warning, nor speaker to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity that they have nobody to preach to them is no excuse they will die in their iniquity then he says but his blood will i require at thy hand yet ezekiel yet brothers and sisters if thou want the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness you know sometimes uh, when you preach and preach and preach and you feel that the people are not listening oh that's all right you're servants of christ your stewards of the mysteries of God, and we unto the people, unto some, the savor of life unto life, and we unto others, the savor of death unto death. It doesn't mean everybody is going to get converted, and it's not their conversion, it's not their reaction or response that makes us to preach or not to preach. Say it, declare it, tell them your calling is from God, son of man. I made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Tell them if they hear, they are saved. If they hear not, verse 19. If thou want the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, not from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And again, verse 20, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require either hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man and the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. And thou hast delivered thy soul. You can see there the responsibility of the watchman. You hear the word from the Lord. No matter where you are, no matter the condition of the people, no matter the reaction of the people, no matter the response of the people. And if you want the righteous man, and you tell him of the danger of backsliding, and you tell him to stay and to remain at his post, in the position wherewith that the Lord has called him to by the cleansing and the calling of the blood of the Lamb. Then, 
He remains righteous. On the final day, he is saved and you are rewarded. But if you do not give them the word, because of one consideration or the other, then the judgment of God comes upon you. And you have to decide that. Which one will you rather have? If you tell the truth, there may be some people that will not appreciate the truth you have told them. But, you know, the frowns of men, they are nothing in comparison of the wrath of God. If you do not tell the truth, if you do not preach the word, if you do not give them the totality of everything you have from the mouth of the Lord, you face the wrath of God. What's the frown of men in comparison of the wrath of God when it says that God is a consuming fire? In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, I want to show you that in the New Testament, it's not only the Old Testament preacher, the Old Testament minister, the Old Testament prophet that is referred to as a watchman. Those of us in the New Testament were referred to by that same title in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls, they watch over your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. What the Lord is telling us here is that we're called to be watchmen and we're watching over the souls of men. He's telling the people in the church, He's saying, Obey them so that they will do it with joy. But notice it says, not with grief. What's the implication of that? Even when you have to do it with grief, even when it's not easy, even when you are pregnant with sorrow, as if you are going to give birth to sorrow the following day, even when you have to declare the word of God, and you do it with grief, you are a watchman, you still have to do it. But it's appealing to the members and it's saying, help that man. Help that watchman so that he will do the work watching over you. Do it with joy. But then he turns to the other man, the watchman himself, says, I don't mind. Even if they make it difficult for you and you have to do it with grief, go ahead and do it. That's the ministry, that's the responsibility of the spiritual watchman in the watch of the Lord. And you see how Jesus did it. This is beautiful. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, here it says in verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Do you see here the ministry of the watchmen? You see the people that were given. When you inherited the position, the privilege in that district, and you were given some members. Already they have been brought to the church by the ministry of another person before you came in. And now you are overseer over them, pastor over them, teacher of those people, watchman over those people. And then it says, all those that you give me, I have kept. None of them is lost except the son of perdition. And for him, what could I do? It's been written more than a thousand years in the Psalms that he will be lost. What could I do? The scripture has written that he was going to be lost and he came, not that he will stay. He came so that he will fulfill what was written concerning him and eventually will be lost. That one I couldn't keep. How could I keep that one? You cannot keep the people that are bent on backsliding. You cannot keep the people that have the nature and the spirit and the attitude of Judas Iscariot in them. But the rest of the people, the ones that want to hear, the ones that might just be ignorant and the ones that might just be deceived because nobody is teaching them, you watch over them as a watchman and you keep them in the faith. By all the means of grace you can have, you can marshal all the gifts, everything the Lord has given you. You see how Jesus did it. Let me show you how Paul the Apostle did it in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately privileged to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. 
that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you and you see paul the apostle he had preached to these galatians when he was still with them there were people that came in unawares that sneaked in that appeared they were one of the people they too they said we two were laborers together with god we two were teachers of the world with you we are ministers of the world with you we have a calling with you we agree with you like tobiah shambalat they came in and he said hey, we just want to get the world built along with you and paul the apostle said we gave them not a chance not an hour and he said why did we do that why did we keep them away why did we have sharp eyes at the eyes of an eagle so that the truth of the gospel might continue with you that's the responsibility of a watchman in acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts 20 verse 26 wherefore i take you to record this day that i am pure from the blood of all men for i have not shunned I have not neglected to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He was talking to the elders from Ephesus. He had gathered them together. Look at verse 17. From my letters, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. After calling them together, he said, you know what? Take it yourselves. And to all the flock in verse 28 over the with the holy ghost has made you overseers feed the church of god do it feed the church of god which he has purchased with his own blood because verse 29 for i know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves ah so it didn't just start yesterday. So at the time of Paul, it was there. Among you shall arise men speaking perverse things. What's the purpose? Tell me in verse 30, the last part. Tell me out loud. To draw away disciples after them. So they have been doing it for a long time. With lying, with cajoling with deception with false promises to draw away disciples after them therefore watch men watch therefore leaders watch this watching is different now it's different from your personal watching watch and pray lest you fall into temptation that's personal watch and be sober the lord is coming that's personal watch that she may be ready for ye know not what hour what time the lord does come that's personal here he's talking to ministers here he's talking to overseers here he's saying that the lord has made you overseers over the church of the living god therefore watch why are they watching because among you they shall come people that will try to draw away disciples after themselves watch and remember that by the space of three years i cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears and now brethren i commend you to god and to the watch of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified and you see then the responsibility we have and that is that we ought to be watchmen watching over the people i said chapter 62 look at that again isaiah chapter 62 verses 6 and 7 i have said watchmen almighty god has done it himself and if you are there coordinator zona leader women coordinator women rep and school visitors and school instructors i almighty god not me i have set your watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day or night which shall never hold their peace if there's anything the false prophets would like us to do is to keep quiet not talk if there's anything the thieves would like us to do those who are stealing not money but they're stealing disciples after them is to keep quiet not talk 
If there is anything, the supporters and the friends of false prophets, if there's anything they want us to do, those friends of false prophets, is that we will know the truth. We shouldn't talk. They keep talking. They keep propagating error. They keep spreading false doctrine. They keep deceiving people. They are very active and dynamic. And if there's anything they want us to do, it is to, you know, they say, you know, you ought to show love and keep quiet. And if I'm stealing your child away, you ought to show love and keep quiet. If I'm even going to brainwash your wife and take your wife away into false doctrine and snatch your wife away into another fellowship, you ought to show love and keep quiet. If I'm going to take away all those people you labored on, all those people you sweated about, all those people you poured your life into, all those people you trained and discipled, if I'm going to take them away, you ought to keep quiet and you ought to show love and be silent. That's what they tell us. But they are not quiet. Servants of Satan, they are not quiet. Those who are stealing disciples from the people that have labored, they are not quiet. And so, if they tell you that you ought to be quiet while they take your children away, while they take your members away, that's not what the Lord says. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, are you there? I said, are you there? Keep not silence and give no rest. Give him no rest. You don't only preach. You don't only teach. You don't only talk. You pray. You double your prayer. You intensify your prayer while you increase your preaching. You talk to men. You talk to your own disciples. You talk to your own members. Then you go on your knees and you pray for them. Give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. I'm sure he will do it. I said he will do it. You see, our responsibilities are clearly stated in the word of God. These responsibilities were not appointed by men. They were appointed by God. And there is no personal consideration or personal weakness that will make us to neglect our God-given duty. Neither should we concentrate on easy tasks and then overlook the seemingly difficult, unpopular tasks. I've read the scriptures, so let me just summarize that point one. Number one, we are to watch over our church members and keep them away from false prophets. Watch over church members. Why were you not in church the other time? Where did you go over the weekend? Where were you? What do you listen to? What books do you read? Ask them. Watch over the church members and keep them from false prophets. Number two, warn the believers of the danger of sin. Warn the believers of the danger of backsliding. Warn the believers of the danger of false doctrine. Number three, keep and preserve the church from false teachers and misleading materials, misleading literature, misleading cassettes. Tell them to throw those cassettes away. Burn them with fire. It may contain nine pieces of truth and one dangerous error. And one dangerous error. Is a thing that will damn their souls. And the nine pieces of truth, items you may find there, will not benefit them. And all those kinds of truth they'll hear there, they'll hear here, they'll hear from you. You know, our little children. You know how some of our little children have been taken into, you know, evil spirit and a familiar spirit and all that. It is not by giving them a bottle of poison to drink. Oh, sometimes they say, you know, good biscuit, appearing good, and good, normal, well-fried ground nuts, very tasty and salty. And then sometimes it's the ground nut, it's a biscuit, and it's those things, but having, you know, the power behind it that they give them, and they see nothing bad there, and they eat the thing, and they chew it, and then they find themselves in the places they shouldn't find themselves. If they do that with those little children, eh, they do it with, you know, people who say they are Christians. And then they give them something apparently good, apparently all right. In fact, it even develops my faith. It opens my eyes to, you know, this one and this one and that one. That thing can have poison hidden underneath that will take you away from the balanced faith. Number four, prevent wolves in sheep's clothing from entering into the fold 
or taking over the pulpit of the church. You don't have any right in any of your districts, any of your churches, to bring in any preacher that whatever he preaches might even be a good preacher without checking off from us here. Because there you are representing the pastor here under God. And so you cannot bring just any preacher. And no preacher is going to tell you and say, look at me, I'm a false prophet. Nobody says that. All those people in sheep's clothing, ravening wolves within, they're going to come, they're going to recommend themselves, and they're going to talk sweet, and they're going to say this happened, and this happened, and that happened. Therefore, you know, I'm just going to be a blessing to your congregation. You prevent those wolves in sheep's clothing from entering into the fold or taking over the pulpit of the church number five. You teach church members the whole counsel of God and train them to love the truth and to distinguish error from the truth. That's the work of a watchman. You so teach convincingly, earnestly, with all the ability in you and with all the seriousness that they will know that you mean what you say, you believe what you say. You teach members of the church, the old council of God, and you train them to love the truth, appreciate the truth, embrace the truth, and to distinguish truth from error. An error from truth. Number six, you pray fervently for God's protection over the church and the preservation of the church. Number seven, you instruct and influence every member to become so watchful over the members of the church that everyone will become his brother's keeper, his sister's keeper. You instruct, you influence every member to be watchful and to become his brother's keeper, his sister's keeper. Point number two. Retribution for unfaithful watchmen. The Lord has appointed you as a watchman. If you are unfaithful to your responsibility as watchmen, watchwomen. What's retribution? Retribution means punishment that is just and fully deserved. Retribution means punishment that is just, fully deserved. In Bible days and in contemporary times, negligent watchmen are severely penalized and punished. You remember Matthew chapter 28 verses 11 to 14. The watchmen, the guards, and the sepulchre of Christ, they were so much afraid of the consequence of being seen as negligent. And that's why the officers told them, don't worry. Just say that his disciple came and stole his body away or asleep. And if any danger will come, you know, we'll rescue you. And he gave them a, a lot of money. And you remember the guards watching over the prisoners? He wanted to kill himself when he thought that Paul, Silas, and those other prisoners he was watching over. When he thought that they had escaped, he drew out the sword. He wanted to kill himself before Paul said, don't kill yourself. No danger was still here. Why did he want to kill himself? He knew that his punishment for negligence will be a more painful death penalty. So before they kill me for my negligence, let me kill myself. He said, if we are negligent and unfaithful in our ministry as watchmen, our punishment will be unbearable. In fact, it would have been better not to be a Christian leader, not to be a Christian worker. It would have been better that you have only your own soul to watch over rather than be appointed a watchman and then you become negligent and unfaithful. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. I'm reading to you from verse 6. Here it says, But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet to alert the people, to judge them, wake them up, to sound an alarm and to tell them there is danger if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood will I require at the watchman's son so thou son of man I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore Thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, didn't we read this before in chapter 3? 
And then the Lord has gone on for another 29, 30 chapters. And he said, Ezekiel, let me remind you of what I told you at the beginning of your ministry. Because when you have been in the ministry for two years and three years and 20 years, in the earlier years, most of the time, you are fervent, you are very aggressive, and you love the flock, and you are protecting the flock, and you are like exclusive. You don't want anybody to snatch away the sheep as you grow older. What happens to many pastors and many preachers and many Christian leaders? And they become so mellowed and so soft. And they've gone through stormy experiences and rough roads. That, and they say, well, you know, as we get older now, we must not be as fiery as we used to be. As vigilant as we used to be. As visionary as we used to be, as very, very serious as we used to be. That's why God said, Ezekiel, I told you before, I made you a watchman. Watch over the house of Israel. I'm telling you again, because I see that as you get older in ministry, you're likely to become softer and become tolerant. And not say anything about the false prophets anymore. And not say anything about the false shepherds anymore. You become acceptable rather than exceptional. Ezekiel, I'm not calling you to be a politician. I'm calling you to be a preacher. He's a politician that wants to be a friend to everybody. Acceptable to everybody. I'm calling you not to be a politician. I'm calling you not to befriend everybody. Be acceptable to everybody. Become exceptional and stand where you used to stand. Verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou speak not to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require thine hand nevertheless. If thou want the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And that's the retribution, that's the punishment that comes upon the watchman that becomes careless, that becomes negligent, uh, that wants to be a politician. He wants us to love him here, and he wants the false prophet there to love him. He wants the people of God to accept him as part of us. He wants the other people to also say, well... You know, I'm just for everybody. Anywhere they're calling the name of Jesus. Anywhere they're, you know, glorifying the Lord and they're praying. After all, they're not using the Jew medicine. False doctrine, no false doctrine. I leave that to God. I'm not a judge. I just love everybody. My friend, you're a politician. In Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm looking at verse 2. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and I'm not visited them. You're so busy. City life. You're so busy. Running after money. You're so busy. You do not understand that your work as a watchman, your work as a preacher, your work as a teacher of this eternal truth takes preeminence, priority, prominence over any other work you have to do. And if you have to make a choice, which one to drop, which one to decrease, which one to lessen, is the other one that you are running after. That's the one you will lessen, this one. You increase your effort, especially at a time like this. It says, has not visited them. It said, behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. In Galatians chapter 1. Verse 6, Galatians 1, verse 6, I marvel that ye are so so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Paul the apostle had been away for some time from the province of Galatia. He's gone to other places. As he heard about them, he saw that they had been removed from the centrality of this gospel truth. And he wrote to them, he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another. 
But there be some that trouble you and will pervert, will destroy, will turn upside down the gospel of Christ. Whether we or an angel from heaven, we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. I'm surprised some people that don't know the Bible. And when some of these preachers go to them and they say, uh -uh, I'm telling you that this is what to believe now. Oh, the one you are talking about, was I not in deeper life? Was I not one of the people that taught those things? And I am now telling you that that victory over sin that sanctification or protein of the Adamic nature. I'm not telling you there is nothing like that. Ah, but sir, you taught us, forget it. I taught you before. And you used to teach us, because I remember what you said before, that when somebody is in Christ, a new creature in Christ, saturated with the word of God, Christ in him, the Holy Ghost in him, that Satan and Christ cannot stay in the same heart at the same time. And that the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and evil spirit cannot dwell in the same heart at the same time. Sir, I heard you said that before. Yes, I taught you that before. But that was deeper life platform. I'm telling you now that you can be saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost and still have evil spirit within controlling your life manipulating your life manipulating your marriage and because these people know next to nothing although they come to deeper life or they say well since he taught us before and he is now teaching us this one now he has increased in knowledge he has graduated you know he's not just with us here he's gone higher is a higher knowledge is teaching us now that's why paul the apostle said listen here though we paul timothy silas all the rest though we or even an angel from heaven that's greater than bishop that's greater than archbishop that's greater than doctor so and so we're talking of angel from heaven though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I again now that if any man, any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Thank God we can stand on this Bible. Can we stand? That's the word of God. You know when somebody is deceiving you? You know when somebody reads the word? And you know when somebody puts the curse upon himself? And Paul was not just cursing other people. He said any man. He said angel from heaven. He also included himself. He said oh, we who came to you before. If we turn around and we change the word. He said we or any other one. If we change it, let's be accursed. You have to watch over the lives of people. In First Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. Verses 39 and 40. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me. And said, Keep this man if by any means he be missing then shall thy life be for his life or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver and as thy servant was busy here and there he was gone i was told to keep the man watch man watch man told to keep the man but as i was busy here and there do you watch over your district do you know who is there who is not there do you know how many of your members are roaming about to this place and that place do you know how many people are still there sitting on your church pew but yet they have gone in the spirit in the heart they have gone although physically they are there 
As thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself as decided it. We need to be very careful. In Second Chronicles chapter 19. Second Chronicles chapter 19. There are times that uh, sometimes uh, there are some people that do not know the meaning of their own calling. And they do not know what the Lord has called them to. And it will be there in our church. And they will be the tale bearer going to tell them this is what they preached. This is what they said. And those deceivers will be giving them handbills and tracts and saying don't mind them. That's the way the pastor feels. But we know our calling. But since you are not joining us, you can still help us. And you can distribute these and bills and these, uh, you know, materials. In fact, you know, take some of these cases. You'll even have discounts on them. And then you are helping to spread false doctrine. I'm telling you, as sure as the word of God is true, I'm telling you, as sure as this word of God will never pass away. If you do that, and you bring false doctrine, you say you are there, you say you are still with the people of God, and you are the propagators, and you are the helpers of evildoers, the judgment of God will be upon you without any shadow of doubt. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 2, And Jehu, the son of Ananiah, the seer went out to meet him. And he said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Jehoshaphat, good king, should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon you from the Lord. You see, if you don't know your calling, and you think that you are there, but... You are not stable. You don't know where you stand. And you may not be the propagator and the preacher of that evil thing, but you are the go-between. You are the bridge between the false prophets and the people who are still in here. And you are the one drawing them away, telling them how they will be deceived. If they are lost, we have done our part. I have spoken the word as plainly as I could. If they are lost, their blood will be upon you. I pray God will help us to be watchful. I say God will help us. We'll be watchful over the people of God. We are watchmen. And we ought to watch over the people of God that none of the people that the Lord has given us will be lost through us in Jesus' name. Point number three, the rewards of faithful watchmen. The rewards of faithful Watchmen in Psalm 78. Psalm 78, reading from verse 70. He chose David also, a servant, and he took him from the sheepfolds, from following the youth with great, great with the young. He brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his son. All the word of God is saying here is David was a shepherd over the sheep. A lion came to take one of the sheep. He endangered his life. He snatched the sheep from the lion's mouth and killed the lion. God was watching him. A bear came and took one of the kids. Again, in faithfulness, his father wasn't there. And if he had told his father, I didn't want the lion or the bear to kill me. I felt that I was more precious. I didn't want to endanger my life. I felt I was more precious than 10 animals, 10 sheep. That's why I left them and I ran away. The father will not rebuke him, but he loved the sheep so much that he endangered his life. Killed the lion, killed the bear. That's why God said, this man, I'm going to make him the king of Israel. That's the reward. That's the reward. Because he was faithful in that little sin, the Lord made him a shepherd over Israel. Took him from following the animals, the sheep, to come and feed 
the people of God, the inheritance of the Lord. For Samuel chapter 2. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. What's the reward? I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. I'm going to raise up a priest. And that priest will do everything according to my mind. And when he does that, I'm going to build a sure house for him. And I'm going to make him walk before mine anointed forever. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah 52 verse 8. Thy watchmen, plural, shall lift up the voice, singular. United. Are we united? Are we in agreement with all that we're hearing? Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. What will be the result? The reward? Break forth into joy. Sing together. Ye west places of Jerusalem. When those watchmen when they're in agreement, when they're in unity, and they do everything they ought to do in the spirit of unity, even the waste places, they're going to sing for joy. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. If the watchmen will be in agreement, and they watch, and they are faithful, and they're vigilant, and they all agree together, and they keep the people of God. He says, the reward is going to be, I'm going to expand, extend their coast, and they're going to be able to reach out to the ends of the earth, and the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. First Corinthians 3, verse 14. If any man's walk abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If our work abides, after the storm is over, after false prophets have come and gone, if we're able to keep the people of God in the fold, and we keep them in the center of the will of God, and the wolf does not devour them, and false prophets do not snatch them away to make them disciples and to give them empty positions. If we keep the people, if any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. I pray you receive a reward. Second John, second John, verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that will receive a full reward. Watchmen, look to yourselves. Don't be careless about this. Watch. Watch over the congregations. Watch over the members. Look to yourselves. That we lose not the things which we have wrought, but that we receive not just a partial reward, a full reward. John, how do we do that? And this is the apostle of love. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. He has not God. Whatever his name, talent, skill, ability, money to waste, to throw to the winds, whatever. Anyone, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the son, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is what? Is what? Partaker of his evil deeds. The rewards the Lord has said he'll give us. Promotion of the faithful to greater service. Number two, desirable earthly blessings. Number three, open doors of opportunity. Number four, salvation of multitudes in different nations. Number five, exalted position in the millennium. 
Number six, full rewards here and hereafter. Number seven, rewards that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, which have not entered into the heart of man, the deep things of God. How I pray that God will help you to be faithful. And in this life, God will bless you. In the life to come, you will not lose your reward. Because as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. May God help you to be doers of the word. And to go out with the zeal of the Lord consuming you. And because you care for the Lord and for the church of the living God. The part of the church in your area, under your supervision, under your leadership. Will not be torn apart, will not be scattered, will not be thrown to the roaring lion. Let's rise up and pray. Watchman, how are you watching over the flock? Christian Walker, how are you watching over the members under your leadership? Are you silenced already? You don't want the false prophets to hear that you are taking your stand for the truth. You want to win their favor and have the wrath of God upon your life. Take your stand. The church of God is precious. Do everything you can do to keep them faithful to the end.